Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, we are making a off-season preview video for the Portland Trailblazers. Um, I'm a big Damian Lillard fan, as you can see right here. So this is a team that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, I think that there's some interesting things that they could do this off-season, but are they things that they should do? Let's talk about it. Their coach is Terry Stotts, and I think he should be fired. Um, they just haven't had enough playoff success while having a top eight NBA player in the entire NBA in Dame for the entirety of his tenure as the coach of the Blazers. And um, other than last year's um, Eastern Conference, Western Conference Finals appearance, which was a sweep, he has not manufactured any playoff success for this team. So I think that he needs to go. Um, he just is has too ISO heavy of an offense. He doesn't run enough plays for Dame and CJ. He doesn't encourage Dame to move off the ball. That's the step that Dame needs to take in order to become Steph Curry level. He's getting lots of Steph Curry comparisons. People are debating if he's a better player than Steph Curry. And at this point, he's not there yet because of his off the ball movement. Um, he doesn't move off the ball at all. He's pretty stationary. If he doesn't have the ball, he's doing a lot of standing either on the wing or in the corner. So, the Blazers need a new coach that has more imagination. I know Terry Stotts is supposed to be an offensive coordinator who is a good offensive coach, but he has not been able to get it done in terms of getting more movement out of his team instead of it just being Dame or CJ dribbling the ball or Mello dribbling the ball and four guys standing on the perimeter. I guess three guys standing on the perimeter, one guy standing on the block. They need to make a change. Um... In terms of guys that they could do it, obviously Tyron Liu is going to be in the conversation for every opening. But um, for this team, I I guess I haven't given too much thought to it. Um, Tyron Liu and Popovich are the two biggest names in coaching hunts right now, but who knows if Popovich is going to leave, and Tyron Liu is going to have a lot of options. Um, yeah, I'm not... Not so, real sure who I would like for them to hire, but I know Terry Stotts needs to be gone. Uh, this guy's just not going to take them as far as they need to go, as far as their ceiling would allow them to go with a great player like Damian Lillard on their team. In terms of the draft, they have the 16th pick. Um, I think they probably will take the best available player at this spot because that has been their drafting mentality the last couple of drafts with selecting... Um, Last year, they got Nasir Little. Year before that, Anthony Simons. Year before that, Zach Collins. Uh, they just kind of take the best guy available and not worry about fit too much, um, which can be proven with how they drafted Simons two years ago when their two best players were clearly guards. Uh, so with the 16th pick, some guys that would be the best available here, uh, Kyra Lewis Jr., I preached it in the, my Magic offseason preview, but if this guy is available, they need to jump on him because I just think he has potential to be a really special player, and I just think he's going to be really, really good in this league. Uh, if they want, uh, they might really like Precious Akshua. Uh, if Kyra is off the board, that's somewhere a direction they could go in. Otherwise, Cole Anthony could still be around here, or RJ Hampton. But all of this is still assuming that they want to go with the best player available, as they have in past years. Otherwise, they'll probably target a wing. Uh, I think that it's possible that one of the good wings in this draft, uh, Aaron Neesmith is one, uh, Sadiq Bey, uh, Patrick Williams. I think that they are likely to go before this, but not guaranteed to go before this. And so maybe one of them falls to the Blazers. Uh, if that happens, then I would be overjoyed if I'm the Blazers and I would jump on one of those players. But uh, if they're not, I think that they should just jump on the best available player and not draft a positional need because I think that 17 is far too early for Josh Green or Cassius Stanley. And those are kind of the next two um, wings in the draft. I guess maybe debate could be made for like a Tyler Bay or... Um, Desmond Bain but once again I think it's too early to pick those guys at 16 they also have the 46th pick um, I'm going to say very similar things as I did in my Magic video about their 45th pick 
the spot you take the best available. I like Paul Reed. I like Sam Merrill. I like Emmanuel Quickly a lot. If you want my explanations for why I like those three players, uh, look back at the Ma check out the Orlando Magic offseason preview because I went very detailed on each of those players on why I like them. So I think the Blazers should select one of those three if they're on the board because in the second round you go best available. Uh, a trade, C.J. McCollum, his name seems to be in rumors every single offseason. Is this the season they pull the trigger? Um, maybe, but I think it's unlikely. I think that if this team's going to make a major move with removing one of their key components of their team this offseason, it should be firing the head coach. I think that C.J. is capable of being a really, really good second option, especially on offense. They just need to add a better defender at the three spot who can take on the best um, guard or wing, whatever they need. And Trevor Ariza can fill that role for this team uh, if he's healthy and playing with the team. Uh, another trade could be throwing all their young guys and a couple picks and grab a star. Uh, I'm not really sure who that guy could be. Maybe it's Drew Holiday, but that's going to be hard for them to get to that number. And I'm not really sure that the Pelicans even want to trade him. I don't think Bradley Beal would be a good fit with McCollum unless you're swapping those two. But that doesn't even make that much sense because Beal isn't that much better than McCollum. And the Wizards are probably going to make you throw on another asset to McCollum in order to acquire Beal. So that doesn't make much sense. Um, maybe if Rudy Gobert is on the trade market. But Nurkic is their third best player. And I'm not real sure that... The, the, Gobert is a huge upgrade from um, Nurkic, so I really don't like the idea of trading their young guys and their picks for a star. I think that one more year, run it back. Uh, free agency, they've got Whiteside leaving. He's a guy you can let go, I, in my opinion. They have Wenyan Gabriel as a young guy who's developing, and I think that he can play a similar role to what Whiteside did Um Except for he doesn't even need to because Nurkic is going to step into that starting spot. But Gabriel can be an athletic center who can protect the rim a bit and um, just uh, do a good job on defense. Not a whole lot on offense, but can catch lobs and finish. Uh, they also have Mello, who said that he thinks he found a home in Portland. So I'd assume that he'll be sticking around next season. Uh, and Wenyan Gabriel is a free agent as well. I think he's restricted. So they should be able to retain him. I'm also not sure that there will be that much interest around the league in him. However, he did play well in the postseason in the few minutes that he got during the Zach Collins injury. So maybe he'll get a decent-sized contract, but I doubt it. And I'm sure he'll be on the Blazers again next season. Some targets in free agency. So uh, most of the guys uh, that I have down here are 3 and D wings. That are going to be cheap. Guys like Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Tony Snell, Justin Holiday, Kent Bazemore, and Jay Crowder. Guys that could play one of the forward spots for this team. Play good defense. Knock down shots if they need it. That's really what this team needs surrounding Damon CJ. Because these guys are not great defenders. But they are really, really ball dominant players. And if you can sp uh, space the floor around them, uh, that's perfect. So, um... A potential 2020-2021 rotation for this team would be Dame at the 1, CJ at the 2, Trevor Ariza at the 3. I guess you could start Melo, but I like Ariza better in the starting lineup considering Melo is just a really good scorer, and I think that he can come off the bench and be a spark plug for this team along with Gary Trent. Lineups with those two against opposing teams' benches, they're going to be able to put up a lot of points. Uh, defense, not great, although Gary Trent is okay, but... A lot of points, a lot of scoring. Trent's a great shooter, and Melo's a good ISO scorer, so that's great there. So you can start Melo or Ariza. Like I said, I'd start Ariza for the reasons I listed. Good defender, knockdown shooter most of the time. But, uh, yeah, at the four, Zach Collins. At the five, Yusuf Nurkic. Kind of what the starting lineup probably would have been if Ariza wouldn't have opted out of the 2020 NBA restart. Off the bench, they'll have Gary Trent, Mello, Anthony Simons, Wenyan Gabriel. Um, maybe Nasir Little steps into a rotation role next season. 
but I find that a bit unlikely. Um, just from what I've heard, he does not seem like he's quite NBA ready yet. So a few key questions with this team is, do they make a big move? I say yes, fire Terry Stotts, but do not make a big move in the trade market. Don't trade CJ. Don't give up your future for a borderline... I don't even know if they could get a borderline all-star for their young players. Maybe if you throw in Zach Collins, but it seems like they really like him and want to hang on. To so that seems unlikely. Uh, can the young guys show improvement? If Zach Collins can take a step forward into being uh, average starting four, uh, he was probably a bit below average um, during the playoff run, or I guess during the seeding games while he was healthy. Uh, so can he take a step forward there? Obviously staying healthy would be huge for him. Can Gary Trent take a step forward with his defense and his shot creation outside of just being a knockdown shooter? Can Anthony Simons take a step forward as a tertiary playmaker in their offense? Um, and can Wenyan Gabriel take a step forward into being a good win, a good rim protector and an athletic big man in the paint? Maybe he can develop a bit of a jump shot. We'll see, but that's another key for this team if they're going to take the step forward in the playoffs next year. And they really need to make that big run soon because I'm not sure how long Dame's patience is going to stay because this team just has not been able to field a championship contender, and they definitely should not trade Dame unless he demands a trade because it is very unusual that you have a top 10 team on your roster when you're not a super small market. They're not Indianapolis or Milwaukee, but they aren't a huge market over there in Portland. So it's not every day that you have a player of this level, and I think that they should hang on to him at all costs and just try to build a winner around him. So maybe that means trading CJ somewhere down the line, but I think that the first step to making this team better is firing Terry Stotts and getting another coach. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know in the comments uh, what you thought. And Portland fans, am I wrong with my assessment of Terry Stotts? I don't watch this team every night during the regular season, so maybe I am wrong. Uh, maybe he is a good coach and someone fit for them. But like I said, I don't think so. But you would know better than me, Portland fans. Um... Yeah, uh, drop a like and subscribe, and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you all again very soon.